My name is Reed Bear. I live in Tennessee. I am a Mormon and I am bipolar. I have kids that are bipolar, siblings that are bipolar, father, grandfather, bipolar. I have a genetic disposition toward being bipolar and um, about a dozen years ago um, I was triggered into a state through a really bitter divorce that I've not really been able to climb out of. I'm on meds and I do pretty well. Um, one of my biggest struggles is getting other people to understand, people in the public. And I was listening to the 183rd semi-annual conference of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and I heard the Apostle Jeffrey Holland talk about his own experience with depression. Now for some of you older folks we used to call bipolar manic depression. Today it's called bipolar. I prefer manic depression and I usually get on camera when I'm manic. <laughs> when I'm depressed, I get sick. It's like my immune system gets worn down and then I sleep and I experience depression. Um, but I do it more quietly and more privately. So tonight when I heard Brother Elder Jeffrey R. Holland, the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles, talk about his experience with depression. I found myself sitting up in the chair and watching it on the BYU channel, and I didn't even realize it till later that tears were streaming down my cheek because I felt like somebody understood. I. That's the hardest thing with a mood disorder is can't really explain it to somebody who hasn't had it. It just it doesn't make any kind of sense. But as uh, Brother Holland said, that it's it's not just a, a lack of a of a um, positive mental attitude and squaring up your shoulders. He he called it a crater of the mind, which I like very much. K. Redfield Jameson wrote a book called The Unquiet Mind. I interviewed um, Dr. K. during my time with the Mankind Project. So, Elder Holland called depression a psychic blow. He called it um, something that was sick and dark. And, and a disability and mortality that required an, an awful lot of patience. And it required the love and the grace of the Savior. I'm on medication, um, Paxil, and I do take something to sleep at night. And as Elder Holland suggested, I, I practice um, partaking of, of the, the atonement of the Savior. I, 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 I go through religious practices of, of prayer and scripture study. Uh, my wife and I study together. We're, we're in uh, the New Testament right now in, in Peter, who was the first apostle, and he talks about charity and how the love of Christ, no matter what kind of burden we have in our life, that experiencing that hope and that, he called it exceeding joy. I read that today in preparation for this conference. Um, it's not something that one can get over immediately and and I'm going to say this to 
to some um, members of the church, particularly leaders, that I would, I, my hope and my prayer is that you go to this link and you listen to Brother Holland and you listen with the Spirit and you let it seep into your life so that if you have someone who is struggling with a mood disorder in your ward or branch that you can be more understanding and encourage them to seek professional help. As Elder Holland said, you know, if you've got physical struggles, we don't think anything of, of, of getting medical help, but sometimes when it's psychiatric oriented, um, we resist. And I don't have any embarrassment really. I, I'm, 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 I'd be happy to be the poster boy for Mormons with, with a mood disorder because uh, it's who I am and it's 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 how I got caught in the generation of of uh, of chromosomes and it's taught me a kind of patience a lot like uh, Tennessee football recently they tied Georgia tonight and it was so close but you know it's it's difficult to do this video while I'm well, I'm feeling maybe a little bit more depressed, but Elder Holland talked about how one of our prophets, George Albert Smith, and I did not know this, in his earlier days, suffered depression. And obviously we know about Abraham Lincoln and, and Winston Churchill, and even the Savior had moments in the Garden of Gethsemane where he must have felt something akin to depression when he said to Heavenly Father, if it's possible to let this bitter cup pass, please do. So, I've been on these meds. Um, I was getting sick a lot. This is about 20 years ago, and I started taking meds, and I, and I became more healthy. And I went into counseling for about a dozen years, and Ultimately, what I want to do is is endure to the end, and I have to do that by going through religious processes of meditation and and finding the spirit in my life on a regular basis. Otherwise, it'd be real easy for me to veer off, even with the medication and the counseling that I've had. Now, here's what I wanted to say earlier, and I had a hard time wrapping my mind around it. For you leaders of the church, he asks that you be merciful, non-judgmental, kind, and compassionate. And I'm here to tell you that I cannot do everything now that I used to be able to do when I was younger. I have more anxiety, I have to pace myself, like Elder Holland said that we should. And I've had some leaders who've just told me to buck up and get over it. And have literally come up and asked me, are you over your problem yet? And that breaks my heart. And it's not their fault. They just don't know. It's, it, it's a lack of understanding. I don't know if I'll ever be completely healthy again, but I do know that someone tonight understood me, and he's one of the leaders of our church, so I can be faithful, and I can know that someone that is very close to the Lord understands and ultimately, the Lord understands me and knows me. So, thank you, Brother Holland. Elder Jeffrey R. Holland, for your courage in speaking out tonight. 
And I invite you all, whether you're Mormon or not, to listen to this goodly man talk about Jesus Christ and mental health.